Hello class, this is Dr. Rob Thompson, your uh, English 1101 instructor for the semester. Uh, uh, welcome to the course. I look forward to working with you. Uh, and um, I wanted to introduce some things to you so you'd feel comfortable, uh, especially if you're not very familiar with taking an online course, uh, online course or if you're not comfortable with, with English or writing or if you're anxious uh, for any reason. Hopefully this will help you out and, and put you somewhat at ease. Uh, so let's just start here with the home page. Uh, let me caution you about all this information here. This is going to give you due dates, and it's going to tell you that some things are past due, and that may or may not be accurate. I don't know. I don't control what's over here. This is this this may confuse you. I would pay attention to what I control, what I, the teacher, have typed, uh, what I know needs to be done, which is all this information over here. Um, so let's start with the syllabus and schedule. Uh, um, um, and, of course, the syllabus. Well, let's review it very quickly. Um, this is, uh, um, uh, you don't have to buy a textbook for the course. Uh, the, anything you need, the, the textbook is in, in the Blackboard shell, and any readings you need to do are, are linked in Blackboard. You do not have to buy a book. Uh, of course, these are my office hours. I am here on the Gordon County campus, uh, room 105, which is in the back of, of classroom 104 in the 100 building here on the Gordon campus. Um, my office hours you see there, Mondays and Wednesdays, I, I, I'm in Floyd County most of those days, uh, but I do plan on coming by and having office hours uh, when I get back. Uh, uh, but if I'm held up in Floyd County, obviously I won't be able to do that. So I, I recommend uh, make, making an appointment with me if you want to meet with me. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to help you. But I recommend making an appointment in advance. That way I'll be sure to be here during that time. Uh, um, and, of course, my email address it's not on here. That's odd. But anyway, my, here it is. Yes, rthompson at gntc.edu. So uh, um, um, uh, send me an email anytime you have a question. And of course, I also recommend visiting the GNTC writing tutors. They're very helpful, very knowledgeable on all the campuses, and they can help you uh, as well. Um, um, this is a, a composition class. I had a, you know, one of my, I, 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 I welcome your feedback at the end of the semester. I enjoy reading uh, what students have to say about the course and, and tweaking things and trying to learn from their, their comments and their, uh, uh, um, you know, complaints or whatever. But I had one who said something one time about all we did was write. It, you know, well, this is a composition class. This, this, what it, English 1101 is not a literature class. It's not the most exciting class you'll ever take. I'm, I'm well aware of that. Uh, it's just making sure you know how to write. Uh, and that's what we spend our time doing, writing and revising, rewriting, and, of course, doing a research paper. Uh, um, the uh, class policy, this, I don't know why this is in blue. I just noticed that. But anyway, uh, uh, of course, we do not have an attendance policy per se. This is not a face-to-face a -face class. There's no time when we all have to get together and meet. Uh, uh, at the same time, I measure your attendance by the timeliness with which you submit your work. For the two unofficial class days you see are Mondays and Thursdays. Assignments will be due just about every Monday and Thursday, maybe some other days every now and then, but for the most part, Mondays and Thursdays. And late work is penalized 10 points per class day. So if it's due on Monday, you turn it on Tuesday or, uh, or you know, Wednesday, it's 10 points off, 20 points a week, obviously we have two class days a week, up to 40 points. So after two weeks, you can turn an assignment in from, you know, months ago, and it'll still receive that 40 point penalty. Students will ask me, can I still turn in this assignment? The answer is always yes. You can turn it in with, again, a, a 40 point maximum penalty. This shows you the way the grades are broken down. We'll write three short essays. All the essays in this class should be two to four, or I'm sorry, all the essays in this class should be Times New Roman, 12-point, double-spaced, one-inch margins. Now, these first three essays are two to four type pages, you know, assuming they're double-spaced, 12-point, Times New Roman. Um, three of those, two to four pages, and then your research paper is longer. It's four to six pages. These first three essays are 15% each of your final grade. The research paper is 30%. And then daily assignments will have along the way and daily grades, you know, class participations, 25%. Uh, of course, be careful for plagiarizing. Uh, uh, any work you submit in this class should be your own work. And uh, um, uh, you want to be sure to, uh, um, uh, you know, not uh, turn in work from, that someone else has already turned in or that you've gotten from the Internet or whatever. 
Uh, the rest of this is standard GNTC stuff, and I don't, don't need to get into that too much. The really the more important document here, though, is the schedule. The course schedule, I clicked on that, and I've got to download it. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, um, this is this tells you what is due every day. Uh, uh, um, of course, these are Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, um, and, and you see here, Monday is the introductory to, introduction to writing assignment. Thursday is the hooks and conclusions assignment. And then we just go from there. Of course, we are a day late here due to MLK Day on the 20th, January 20th. I would recommend printing this out, keeping this, putting it in a prominent place in your room, on your desk, wherever you work. And, and this, this will help you. This tells you what's due throughout the semester. You keep up with this, you'll be fine. Some students, for some reason, want to just kind of turn work in whenever they want to turn it in. They, they, and they'll, they'll amass late points just about with every assignment. And then they somehow expect to pass. That's not a, a, a recommended strategy for passing the course. Of course, it's certainly not recommended if you want an A or a B. But, uh, um, you know, you should turn work in on time. I know you may be busy. I know you probably have a full-time job. You may have a family. You may be a non-traditional student. I get it. I know, I know it's busy. But, but you have signed up for a college course. Uh, you are expected to do college level work. And that means you are expected to turn things in on time. If there's obviously, if there are extenuating circumstances, if something really tragic um, happens that, that's really a problem, I hope you will let me know. And of course, I'll try my best to work with you. Uh, however, I've had some students who, you know, once a week, they send me an email with some kind of an excuse. Uh, uh, well, you know, those, those get to be old after a while, to be totally honest. And so I hope that you aren't, aren't that student. I hope you don't make excuses. Uh, if your technology is acting up, if your computer is acting up, I don't know what to tell you. That, that's unfortunate, uh, um, but obviously I can't accept that as an excuse. Uh, um, you know, public libraries have computers. Uh, your neighbor, your parent, your friend, your your grandparents, your parents, somebody else has a computer you could run and borrow maybe for a while. Solve, you know, you may have a problem you have to solve. If you put things off to the last minute, it obviously limits the amount of time you have to solve that problem. Uh, so I would recommend trying to work in advance so that, that you uh, um, you know you don't get caught and, and, and wind up having to take some late penalties. Anyway, uh, that's the end of the lecture about that. But, but do try to turn things in on time. For the most part here, the course revolves around the lessons. Uh, uh, you know, this first one here says go to the discussion boards. This is due this week by Friday uh, the 10th, uh, uh, um, where you just introduce yourself. So you go over here to the discussion boards, the discussion boards link. It gives you the directions. Of course, pay attention to the word limits. You know, they're important. It gives you due dates and exactly what you should do. You click on, on the, the core, on the um, discussion board and you click create thread and you start, you know, your own thread. Now notice for discussion boards, anytime there's a discussion board due, your initial post is due the day before the due date. So in this case, the schedule says it's due on Friday, uh, um, the 10th. Uh, um, yeah, Friday the 10th is when it's due. However, your initial post where you, you know, and introduce yourself to the class and, and, and the first thing you post is due the day before, Thursday the 9th. Uh, and the reason we do that, obviously, is that for a discussion post, you need to respond to each other. You need to reply to each other. If we all put it off to the last minute, we wouldn't have anyone to respond to. So, you know, you need to, to get your initial post in the day before and then, and then respond to your classmates. Uh, by the, the actual due date. And the same thing for rough drafts. I got here your narrative essay rough draft. And of course I put this on the schedule, you'll notice. Uh, uh, the rough draft discussion is due, uh, um, February 3rd, which means your rough draft is due February 2nd, uh, the day before. So I think that'd be on Monday. So Monday, February 2nd, uh, uh no, actually it's a Sunday, pardon me. Sunday, February 2nd, you need to have your rough draft finished and posted in the discussion, you know, board. And then you read a couple of your classmates' drafts and offer comments and suggestions, and all that's due by February 3rd. So those, those uh, discussion boards are um, a little tricky. But otherwise, you know, once you've done your initial uh, introduction, introductory assignment, you just go in order. Unit 1, uh, uh, um, you have two lessons for that, and of course it gives you the due dates here. And then you just go to, to uh, Unit 2, which is your first essay. Unit 3 is your second essay. We have this little extra assignment, which is, is pretty easy, this fox and hedgehog assignment. And then your third essay, and finally your research paper. 
and you just go in order. Of course, you click on the folder, and there are different lessons and information for each one, and um, and that's that's pretty much it. Notice that with the one one important thing, well, this grammar and punctuation rules link. I'm not sure why there are two of these, and we're not I'll have to clean this up. Um, you should only do one, so I'll uh, delete one of those. But anyway, the grammar and punctuation rules are very important in the class. And I think I have a, another video where I talk about these, so I don't need to get into them too much. But when I grade your essay, I will count off so much for every rule that you violate. You know, if it's a comma in the wrong place, if it's a run on or a fragment or an apostrophe that's left out or whatever, I count off using these rules. And I will put on your essay, I'll say 15C minus 2. That means you misused an apostrophe, and that's two points off. You get two different grades. You get a content grade and a grammar grade. Seventy-five percent of your grade is the content grade. How good is the essay? And by the way, when I say essays are two to four pages, really for an A or B essay to get a really good grade, it should be three pages, at least three pages. That's what you're aiming for. Uh, obviously, if you do the bare minimum, you're going to get a bare minimum kind of grade. But uh, um, so, you know, if it's good, if it's, there's a lot of good information, if it's well organized, if you have specific detailed examples, et cetera, et cetera, then that's 75% of your grade. 25% is based on these grammar rules. So again, I count off, you know, I'll put 19B minus 2 or, or 3A if it's a run on, 3A minus 5. The, the, these two are, are, are five points each fragments and run offs. You have to be able to write complete sentences uh, in a college class. Anyway, and so then after I've done all that, you may not like the grade, uh, the 25% of your grade. And sometimes students make zeros on, on grammar. You know, they're not very good at it. They get in a hurry. They don't proofread and they wind up with a really bad grade, but you can then rewrite it. And, and, um, you know, that this, the, that's the way to get a good grade is to rewrite your essays. I will, once I'm finished grading the essays, I will post the new, the rewrite date and I'll, I'll put a new link in the lessons. In the narrative writing folder, for example, I'll put a new link down here at the bottom. That'll be for the rewrite, and you can rewrite it and submit it for a new grade. It may be a, a whole new grade, or it may be averaged with the old grade, but still it'll be a, an improved grade. So that's, you know, rewriting is key in this class. That's the key to success. Turn things in on time, especially those essays that count 15, 30% of your grade, and um, rewrite when you have a chance. Now, the research paper, you will not have a chance to rewrite. Uh, we, we, that'll be at the end of the semester. So you have to really take your time with it, proofread carefully, make sure it's good before you turn it in. But for the first three essays, the way to improve them is to rewrite them. And again, and that, and that helps obviously at the end. If you wind up with a, you know, an 88 or 78 or 68 or 79, 89, you're really close to, to, you know, the grade above it. Uh, then I'll look and see, did you do all your rewrites? Did you try to, did you do what you could when you had a chance to do it? If you didn't, then I assume you're, you're, you're okay with that C or that B or whatever. And that's, that's the grade you'll get. Uh, um, so, you know, that's, you know, class participation is measured a lot with, with re, if you, you know, if you did the rewrites, if you did the whole process or if you just settled for whatever you made on the first draft. Anyway, that's about all I have for you today. I hope you will let me know. Email me. If you have questions, come see me here on the Gordon campus. I look forward to working with you this semester. I hope you have a great semester and a, and a, and a, and a great week, and uh, I will look forward to, to working with you soon. Uh, have a great day.